Hi everyone, in this video we are going to solve the exercises from A to 14 of chapter 5 which is elasticity and its application. This is a book of Gregory Mankiw which is principles of economics. So the A point says consider public policy aimed at smoking. A. Studies indicate that the price elasticity of demand for cigarettes is about 0.4 so this means which is inelastic because it's less than one which makes sense people maybe can pay a little bit more for the same quantity because it's a vice they need to if a pack of cigarettes co currently costs two dollars and um, the government wants to reduce smoking by 20%. By how much should it increase the price? So remember that here we have the elasticity price of demand which is 0.4, we have the price which is 2, and we have the quantity, the percent, the percent that the government wants to, to decrease the quantity is 20%. So we know that the elasticity price of demand is given by the change in the numerator of the quantities and the change in the price. So here we can we need to find out this variable which is the percentage uh, change of the price. So I can collect, I can just multiply to the other side and the elasticity price of demand can go to divide. We already have these two data so we can uh, solve for the change in the price. So here is 0.2 which is 20% and 0.4 which is the elasticity of demand. So here we have the, the change in, in, in the price is 50%. So it means that they have to increase in 50% the, the price of 2. Okay, this is the increase for the government. So B if the government permanently increases the price of cigarettes, will the policy have a larger effect on smoking one year from now or five years from now? So, when when they have like, it, remember that in the short run there is a high effect. Okay, because people they can they cannot like manage or change their consume in the um, in the, in the long run they can they can change the um, the consume what it means it means for example when we um, increase the price now maybe it's going to be um, uh, a reduce of cigarettes because of the of the change but maybe in the future they will find another substitute as chewing tobacco or tobacco or cigars so in this case we will say that the policy will have more effect just in one in one year so studies also find that teenagers have a higher price elasticity than do adults why might this be true so this is because of elasticity Adults, they have a, a curved demand more inelastic. Why? I have maybe the first, it would be because they have like more income, so they can spend more on cigarettes. On the other side, where there is a teenager, maybe they are just starting, um, they, they are just starting smoking. So in this case, they can just like stop, um, stop smoking. On the other side, the adults they have a, like a long history with cigars, with cigarettes. So in this case, they need more. Okay, it could be both cases: the income and the necessity of the adults. So, would you expect the price elasticity of demand to be larger in the market for all ice cream or the market for all ice cream or the market? Sorry, I wrote two eyes or the market for vanilla ice cream would you expect the price elasticity of supply for be larger in the market for all ice cream or the market for vanilla ice cream be sure to explain your answers so here 
We know that the elasticity price of demand is higher for vanilla ice cream. Imagine that you have all the flavors, okay, in the ice cream shop, but uh, you want to buy the vanilla, but the price is higher than the other ones. What would you do? Usually, you change the flavor. You go to another flavor. So the elasticity price of demand is higher, okay? In the other case, the elasticity price of supply is higher for the ice cream. Why? Because they can do, they can produce easier than one specific flavor. Okay. Imagine you know that when you have the elasticity price of supply, which is completely inelastic, for you it's so hard to produce one more of this quantity. In this case, it's the same. When you have ice cream, you can produce in general whatever ice cream. You you cannot. I mean, you must not produce just one particular flavor. Instead, when you have just one specific flavor, it could be more inelastic because maybe you cannot, when it runs out of one flavor, you cannot produce immediately this one flavor, okay? Instead of the completely ice cream that you can move with the price more, you can offer more quantity of ice cream. Tenth. Pharmaceutical drugs have an inelastic demand, and computers have an elastic demand. Suppose that technological advance doubles the supply of both products, that is, the quantity supplied at each price is twice what it was. A. What happens to the equilibrium price and quantity in each market? So here we have the market for medicines, so we have the supply. And here we have the demand, which is completely inelastic, okay? Here, if you see, the, it looks like an I of inelastic, okay? So, here is the price. So, there is the um, technological advance. So, the supply curve shift to the right, which make, uh, this is the price, the prices are lower and the quantities are higher. So this is what happens. What about the computers market? Here we have the supply and here we have the demand, which is elastic. Okay, you see it's almost horizontal. So here we have the prices and quantities of equilibrium. So there is a technological advance. So here we have the new equilibrium. So what happened with the prices? It happens exactly the same. There is a decrease in prices or there is an increase in quantities. Okay. So the next question is we here we have the graphs again to answer the other three questions. Okay. So B1 says which product experiences a larger change in price? So here we have a change large in uh, a change um, in price larger for medicines here. Um, C. Which product experiences a larger change in quantity? Here, computers, due to the technological advance. And D. What happens to total consumer spending on, on each product? Remember that when you have an inelastic curve, it's better for you to charge a larger price. Okay? In this case, the income of the medicine of the medicine market market it will be less than before because just this square which is uh, like earn is not compen the, it doesn't compensate the loss of this square here okay so in this case the income in the total is, is spending on each product is going to be less for the medicine on the other side, when we have an elastic demand, we know that we, our strategy is to charge a less price because this square, which is the new uh, consumer spending, is larger than we lost with the price higher than we charged it before. So, in this case, for computers, the computer spending will be higher than before. Seventh point. Beachfront resorts have an inelastic supply, and automobiles have an elastic supply. 
Suppose that a rise in population doubles the demand for both products. That is, the quantity demanded at each price is twice what it was. A. What happens to the equilibrium price and quantity in each market? So here we have the resort. Here is the supply, which it looks like inelastic, it's almost vertical. So this is an inelastic curve. Okay, and here we have the demand. So what happened? There was an increase in the demand. So here it was an increase in the demand. <clears throat> so we have this. So what happened to the equilibrium price went to each market? Okay, the increases. And for the automobile, we have the supply, which is almost horizontal. And here we have the same, an increase in the demand. So here we have the same. Here we have exactly the same. An increase in prices and increase in, in, in quantities. Now we have to answer the same questions before. So here we have the graph to understand better what has happened. So the first question says, which product experiences a larger change in price? So this one is going to be a larger change in price for the resort. And which product experiences a larger change in quantity? It's going to be for the automobile, for the automobile market. What happened to total consumer expanding on each product? So we see here that the consumer spending will increase for both. Because we see here larger quantities and larger prices. Okay. This is 12. Several years ago, flooding along the Missouri and Mississippi rivers destroyed thousands of acres of wheat. A. Farmers whose crops were destroyed by the floods were much worse off, but farmers whose crops were not destroyed benefited from the floods. Why? So here we have the first. Uh, I just suppose here an elastic demand. Okay. I, and I suppose an elastic demand because I know that there was a effect in the supply because of the flood. So the supply is going to shift to the, in this case, here, um, is going to shift to the left. Sorry, here is going to be 1 and 2, okay? So this is shift to the left. And why I put demandic uh, a demand which is elastic because we know that in elastic curve for demand when we have an increase in the price there is going to be a decrease in the income in the total revenue because here we have that this this was the initial point okay so the quantity is there's going to decrease the arrow is in the other side so is in the other side and the price as well so these quantities that will lose uh, they are not compensated by the little increase by the price. So this is why they are worse off. This is crops destroyed. Remember, the arrow is going to be to the other side and the price as well. So this is going to be a shock to the supply. It's going to be shift to the left. So it's going to be this one. Okay. And why the others? So I want to maintain like the demand curve because they are elastic. Okay. For, so this is the case why they why they they are worse off and now given the this was an increase in the demand why because given the increase in the price with the, these crops they have to consume to the other that they were not destroyed so they earn because of the floods okay what information would you need about the market for wheat in order to assess whether farmers as a group were hurt or helped by the flood? So first, we need to obtain the sum um, of the aggregate demand and supply, okay, in order to plug everything in just one graph. So if the aggregate demand is inelastic, in general, they will help. Why? Because they will, because of the flood, there will be a the total aggregate supply usually because of the flood it goes shift to the left so an increase in the price in in elastic demand it it returns a higher revenue okay so it would be better 
but on the other side, if the aggregate demand is elastic, in general they work hard, because an increase in the price as we saw for the crops where they were destroyed, there was a decrease in the total revenue. 13. Explain why the following might be true. A drought around the world raises the total revenue that farmers receive from the sale of grain, but a drought only in Kansas reduces the total revenue of that Kansas farmers. Why? This is given because of the elasticity demand price. So in the world, the elasticity is more inelastic. So an increase in the price returns higher revenue, and in Kansas is elastic. A higher price, it, be, it returns less revenue. So here we have the price, we have this one, which is the elasticity, which you see is completely, almost perfectly inelastic, the demand. So there was a drought, so it, it turns out um, decrease, oh my god. This is okay. This was the initial point. This was price one and quantities one. So there was a drought. So the supply shift to the to the left from C1 S1 to S2. It has a less quantities and a higher price. So you see here the the total revenue in the world is higher because of this. And what about Kansas? Kansas is completely the opposite because the demand demand is complete um, is elastic so in this case there was a drought so there was to shift to the left for the supply curve and in this case is going to be a decrease in the quantities and a little increase in prices so this loss is not compensated by the little increase in prices so they are for this reason Kansas is worse off and the world is better off so the last point because better weather makes farmland more productive, farmland in regions with good weather condition is more expensive than farmland in regions with bad weather conditions. Over time, however, as advances in technologies have made all farmland more productive, the price of farmland adjusted for overall inflation has fallen. So use the concept of elasticity to explain why productivity and farmland prices are positive, positively related across space but negatively related over time. So here we have the, this case for, um, for, this is the case for productive land. So no, don't pay attention to this as well at this point. Okay, so here we have the 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 productive the productive land. So here we have a demand inelastic. Why? Because because of the farmland in product, productive land is more, more expensive because they can charge a higher price because they will receive a higher revenue. So this is going to be the case. And in the other side, for the non-productive, non-productive farmland, we have here a demand which is inelastic. So they have to charge a lower price, okay, in order to have more revenues. So here you will see because if the farmland with the productive land they charge this point, remember that when inelastic curve they will receive less when they decrease the price so for this reason is higher okay so for this reason is positively uh, related higher productivity higher price because of the demand what happened in the um, in the long run in the long run we have that the demand it turns out more elastic or it turns out more in the middle because there is no more difference, there is no more difference for non-productive and productive uh, farmland because they are almost the same because of the technological advance. So the demand is going to be almost the same. But with the important thing is like there's going to be a, a technological advance. So we see here how over time the price decreased from P1 to P2 and the quantities increases as well. 
so this is devoted by the technological advance and we see here that the demand curve is almost the same for both because they are almost substitutes okay i hope it has worth of a great success with economics and see you the next video bye bye